Hello everyone, right in front of you is a scene where I am testing the injector and ignition functions of an ECU. I am doing it in a very simple way, but the important point is that we can still conclude whether these functions of the ECU are working properly or not. To achieve that, I will guide you step by step on how to practice and work directly with an engine control ECU. During this process, I will explain in detail all the pinouts on the ECU. From there, you will be able to apply this knowledge to create your own load simulators for ECU testing. In automotive repair, having enough tools to check and test is extremely important. However, professional equipment is often very expensive, and buying a full set at once is really difficult. That's why I will show you how to build your own tools and load simulators for ECU testing using very simple and easy to find components around us. This method not only saves costs, but also helps you understand the ECU much faster. For today's practice, I will use an engine control ECU from KIA and Hyundai, model M789. In principle, all engine control ECUs from different manufacturers work in a very similar way. So you can easily apply this method to whichever ECU you have on hand. I chose a KIA Hyundai ECU because its wiring diagram is easy to read, making it easier for you to follow and practice along. Before we can power up and test this ECU on the workbench, we need to know the basic conditions for the ECU to operate, as well as its working principle. To do that, we must learn how to read and analyze wiring diagrams correctly. So now, I will walk you through analyzing the wiring diagram of this ECU. First, open the correct wiring diagram that matches your ECU. I already explained how to look up wiring diagrams in the previous video. If you haven't watched it yet, please go back and check it out. I will leave the link in the description below. First of all, for an ECU to work, it must have both power supply and ground. Depending on the ECU model, the power pins B plus and the ground pins may be different. Some ECUs only need one ignition power, called IG power, which comes after the key switch. But other ECUs also require a constant battery power, called BAT, in order to operate. That is why you need to practice reading and analyzing wiring diagrams carefully. Now let's take a look at one example together. When you look for a diagram, there is one important note. Many vehicles have two versions, manual transmission or automatic transmission. So we must always check the title of the diagram to avoid using the wrong one. In this case, the diagram has 12 pages. From page 1 to 6, it is for manual transmission, and from page 7 to 12, it is for automatic transmission. Since we are working on the manual version, we will only use the first six pages. On page 1, we see the constant power circuit. It is marked as hot at all times. This power is supplied through the fuse and relay box. One branch goes through the ECU B fuse, 10 amps, and then into pin 82 of the ECU. This is one of the required power pins for the ECU to start working. At the same time, this power also feeds the main relay coil, waiting for a control signal from the ECU. Once the ECU sends the signal, the relay closes and provides power for other systems. So on this page, we only need to remember pin 82 is hot at all times. Next, on page 2, we see the wiring of several sensors. Here, pin 73 and pin 51 are ground. You can use these pins the GND connection for the ECU. On the top side, there is a junction connector. On the left side, you see a note from SNSR 10A. This means the line comes from a 10 amp sensor fuse through the main relay. On the following page, the diagram shows hot in on or start. This means ignition power after the key is turned on. 
This IG power goes to pin 83 of the ECU and also supplies the ignition coils. So now we know pin 83 is the ignition power input. On the next page, we find another ground pin. That is pin number two. Let's summarize. The ECU has ground at pins 2, 51, and 73. It has constant battery power at pin 82 and ignition power at pin 83. These are the basic power and ground pins required to let the ECU start working. Uh, once the ECU has power and ground, it will send a signal through pin 22 to activate the main relay. The main relay then provides power to other devices, such as injectors, sensors, and the fuel pump, preparing the engine for operation. Also, the power after the main relay is connected to pin number 6 of the ECU. This is another power input that helps the ECU run all of its functions. To explain the logic in a simple way, let's think of it like this. The BAT power supply going into pin 82 of the ECU is the constant power. This power keeps the MCU inside the ECU alive. The ignition power, EG, goes into pin 83 after you turn the key on. This signal tells the ECU to command the main relay to close. Once the main relay closes, it supplies power to the rest of the vehicle systems, so everything is ready for the driver to start the engine. Next, the power that comes through the main relay goes into pin number 6 of the ECU. This power is used for the driver ICs inside the ECU, which control the entire engine electrical system. This is the basic principle of every engine ECU. You should always remember this principle and apply it in your repair work. If you truly understand how the ECU works, it will help you a lot in solving problems with the vehicle's electrical system. For example, when you face a car that has no power, understanding this logic will guide your troubleshooting steps. Remember, the ECU controls the whole system through the main relay. So the first step is to check if the main relay is closing. If the main relay is not closing, then check the power supplies that go to it. The B plus power, the ignition power IG, and the ground for the ECU. If all these supplies are correct, but the main relay still does not close, then check the control signal from the ECU to the relay. If the signal is present, but the relay does not close, the problem is in the wiring or the relay itself. If there is no control signal, then we can conclude that the ECU is faulty. In reality, an engine ECU system does not simply work in a ready state. To actually start the engine and keep it running, many more conditions are required. For example, the immobilizer signal, the crankshaft sensor signal, and the camshaft sensor signal. And once the engine has started, the ECU must do more than just keep it running. It must make sure the engine operates smoothly with no errors. To achieve this, the ECU needs to coordinate with many other sensors and auxiliary devices in the vehicle. In the next video, I will guide you through direct practice on the ECU. We will learn how to check each sensor signal line, each injector control line, and each ignition coil signal. This will help you understand how to test and repair engine ECUs with confidence. Today's video may seem simple, but this is the very first basic step you need to master. If you keep practicing reading and analyzing wiring diagrams, you will develop this important skill. And that skill is the foundation for becoming a professional automotive technician. Automotive technician. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.